Good morning, everybody. I hope you'll join me for a tea and a talk. I wanted to talk a little bit about the power of asking, why do we do this? My father-in-law, as is his wont, sent through a funny little email and it had a story in it. And to be honest, it seems to be doing the rounds. So this may well be familiar to some of you, but in summary, it's saying when it comes to the American Space Shuttle, there's a shuttle that sits inside a big fuel tank and then it's got these two boosters that sit alongside it that fire it into the air to get it off the ground to start. Now, it claims that uh, the size of those boosters is dictated by the fact that the factory that makes them has to send them by rail through a tunnel. And the tunnel is a particular size, so these boosters can't be any bigger than the size of this tunnel. So the, the space shuttle has a something that's dictated by the size of the railroad. It says, now when it comes to the size of the railroad, the rail gauge, how far the, uh, the wheels are apart on the rails, is four foot eight and a half inches. And it says, well, what a strange number, you know, how come that's the size that's dictated it? And it's saying, well, go back to uh, Britain and you have the British engineers that built the railroads, uh, the first railroads and uh, influenced the US construction. And they've got, uh, they set that standard. And they were basing it on uh, wagons, on uh, chariot uh, axles from the Roman roads that had been laid down across Britain. And so we're going further back, you know, into time, back into Roman Britain. And what is the reason for that? Well, the Roman chariot is, that's the axle width that allows two horses in front of it to stand side by side and then pull a chariot. And of course, that's going to be established, you know, even way further back. So we have something that is sending people into space that is dictated by a standard set two, two and a half thousand years in the past by how wide two horses are. And that's still being done today. So a fun little tale. And in terms of work, I think you can see where we're going with this, but so often you come across things that are done in a particular way and people begin to take them for granted. They often ask, uh, forget to ask, why are we doing things in that way? And it's always been one of the things that uh, I've said to anyone new joining an organisation uh, or changing a division, you know, moving somewhere brand new and seeing everything for the first time. You have such a wonderful gift because you can ask, why? And the thing is, often, that so many things that are just done in a particular way, that we still do in a particular way, and we're not asking whether or not they are optimal, whether or not they are the best and the most effective thing that we can be doing. However, one of the other things that can come out of it is you can find that yes, we are doing things in this way, and it may not seem the best, but there are other factors involved. And indeed, uh, I'm not one, I don't wanna mislead you guys. I don't wanna come out with internet facts as I try to brief my little boys, you know, beware of internet facts, try and find an alternate source. So I went looking online, you know, is it really true that space shuttle boosters are set by the width of a tunnel? and the railroads and all the way back to Roman chariots and two horses. And uh, Snopes, uh, the uh, kind of urban legend checking site, uh, back in 2001, discussed this. So there's your first alarm. Uh, although this may have gone viral now, Irish Times said some bloke uh, put it on Twitter the other day. Um, yeah, this has been going since at least 2001. So you've probably got a viral thread that's at least 20 years old, which means it was spreading just by email. Yes, cast your mind back. There was only email, there was no Twitter, Facebook, social media. There was, ah, yeah, the, the, the dark days. And it was saying that actually when you break these things down, um, you know, it's just actually the US uh, didn't have its gauge set by the UK. Uh, actually, there were uh, something in the region of four different railroad uh, gauges in operation in the US prior to the uh, American Civil War. And that actually it was after the North won, they sort of standardized the network and brought the South into line with theirs. So immediately 
No, it wasn't quite dictated by uh, Britain. And then you go back that little bit further and you look at Britain and you say, well, you know, why did they do it that way? And actually, you know, um, think about transport. The Romans don't have a monopoly on having two horses pulling something side by side. Horses are horses, you know, their, their breeds can vary in size, but, you know, broadly speaking, the width of two horses pulling something is broadly the same. So it's just a practical size to use to move wagons. And then when you had British engineers building the first railroads, you have something existing that works. You don't need to design and build brand new carriages. You can essentially say, look, you know, I've got these carriages here. I can lift and shift those and put them onto these new railroads and just have them pulled by the iron horse. So immediately we've sort of taken something that seems ridiculous or at least seems kind of like, oh, why was this never questioned or this has gone on forever? But actually it seems strange, but you ask about it. You say, look, why are we doing things in this way? And then you find, actually, some of this makes sense. We don't have to be constrained by it, but the history, you know, how these things evolved, that makes sense. It's not simply that people were constrained. They took this and it's like, yep, this is a sensible option and it has moved on. So, when it comes to any role, and really very importantly, remembering to try and do this in your existing role because you really do get familiar and comfortable with processes. Take a moment every now and again, step back and just say, why? Why do we do it this way? Is this still the best way? All right, well, thank you very much for joining me for a tea and a talk. This is probably my last one before Christmas, so I shall wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Cheerio.